you know, it's... You talk about triggers, and people use that word kind of flippantly right now. You know, they got triggered. Don't get triggered. But with PTSD, there really are triggers. And I was just flipping through Facebook, and somebody posted a childhood photo of me. And it just popped up in my news feed, and I just instantly got triggered. And when people say things are heartbreaking, I don't know that I ever really knew what it meant. But even sitting here right now, my heart literally hurts. It hurts. It's, it's physical pain, and it becomes excruciating. Last night, it was so bad. And I couldn't escape the pain. And there were all kinds of other sensations going on. And I still have, I just woke up. I still have my hospital bands on. Um, and uh, the only thing that would alleviate the pain was nitroglycerin. But you can only have that uh, three times in 15 minutes. And it didn't take long for the pain to come back. On the positive side, I did not have a heart attack. But here's a problem with panic disorder. And people don't realize that there are physical side effects. It's not just a psychological problem. That's just a piece of the puzzle. It's a very complex disorder. And um, people have thought for a long time that I beat it. Well, it didn't. Um, in fact, I'm so sore. Oh, God, I could barely touch in my chest because I kept fainting. And to wake me up, oh, God, I could barely touch my chest. To wake up, they would do a hard sternum rub. And um, the thing is, I wasn't falling unconscious because of a, a physical thing. It was a psychological physical thing, and I can't remember what I, they called it, but... Um, it's like someone who faints at the sight of blood or faints at, it's a fear response. I'm like a fainting goat. <laughs> you scare me, I pass out because I have a dissociative disorder. I just check out. When, when things are that scary for me, I just go to have to go to and find another place and I kind of get mad. I know I understand they had to wake me up because they have to determine if I'm unconscious or if I have just fainted. But I think that the woman was kind of brutal because I've been woken up from those with a lot less painful sternum rubs. So anyway, my diagnosis last night was angina, which is heart pain. When you have that kind of pain, it's hard to determine. One of the problems we had, I sat here for an hour last night because in that kind of pain because we couldn't figure it out. My, I have my husband, thank God, who has been with me since our 20s dealing with this. And it's been a thing near 30 years that I've had this disorder. And, you, you know, with the cost of an emergency room visit, and I kept thinking of the resources because I live in a really small town. We have one ambulance, and I'm like, what if it's not an emergency? And what if I'm wasting their time? And what if they take me... You know, maybe I should have you drive me. I don't know what to do, so just drive me to the station where they can do a check on me there. And maybe I cannot have to use the ambulance because you just don't want to use the ambulance because then what if somebody has something serious happen here in town and they would have to wait for an ambulance from another area to come in. That's scary. So you just feel like you're wasting resources and you're throwing the... the it's, I've been, I'm sorry, I've been feeling like, that we're like one step away from, one of the hospital visit away from bankruptcy with the way our insurance works and I don't want to go to the hospital <clears throat> because of the cost. I don't want to go because I don't want to use up the resource of our one ambulance in town in case somebody else needs it. So you sit here and you worry and you wonder, which just adds to it. It just gets compounded. And you don't know, you know, you have, you don't know how to make a decision because you're, everything's firing wrong. You're just, it's a, it's a mess. 
and I do take medication for for my panic disorder and I I had gone to sleep yesterday and um, gone like eight hours without my medication but the med even taking it didn't help nothing was helping I took my Lanta I took everything but you know there's just all this you try to think and be a good human being you know but you don't know if you're risking your life to do it and at my age you just don't know so the paramedics wanted to take me and um, we got there and I really don't remember much I don't I, I was there all night it was just a lot of problems with just getting my vitals and just looking and, and being wheeled around and watching, you know, like when you're watching a movie, you're just laying down on a gurney and you're just watching light, fluorescent lights and ceiling tiles. Just... And that's what I was watching, and, and that's what I remember, you know, just being moved. I don't know where I was going, I don't know anything, I don't know who was pushing me, or if I was going to x-ray, or for some tests, I don't know. I remember my kids, my kids showing up. I remember when my husband got there. Um... So, it is what it is, but triggers do exist. I kind of get frustrated with people who use the word flippantly because with post-traumatic stress disorder and, and panic disorder, a trigger is, uh, it sets off it's like it's truly like firing a weapon it's not like it's gonna make you angry or it's gonna make you want to to do something that you might not want to do it's 100 percent out of your control when something triggers you it like sucks the air out of you and it becomes an emergent situation it's not it, it's more serious than people have been using it as so that word has been overused lately and I rarely get triggered I don't even remember a time when I was really triggered Last night I was triggered, and it set off a series of events that is pretty horrifying. So now I have a prescription for nitroglycerin. I hope it works. I don't ever want to deal with that crushing chest pain again. Um, but you know, typically there's a dual diagnosis. You do have something physically wrong with you. It's not just psychological. But there's psychological components and there's physical components. And the older you get, the harder it is to determine. And as you head into menopause, it gets even worse. Because a whole new set of symptoms come up and you don't know. You, you have to question. You don't know when to go to the doctor. You don't know. Because the signals are screwed up. It's all screwed up. Anyway, I am not great. But I'm here. I'm not going to give up fighting. I'm going to try to look for the best. I'm going to try to deal with um, being alone again and possibly having to deal with that with nobody to call and having to make those decisions on my own. And I'm going to pray that uh, I don't lose everything I have by going to the hospital. And it sucks that I were considered middle class American people with good health insurance. And we have to worry about things like going to the hospital when it feels like we're having a heart attack. I'm always here to answer your questions about panic disorder, agoraphobia, dissociative disorder and dissociative identity disorder and until then I'm just going to continue taking care of myself and doing the best I can bye